All right. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. I am Kelsey Summers, and I'm the executive director of the Hope Center here in Boone. Um, I am married for eight years, um, and I have two kids. And so one of the reasons I actually started working at Hope was I was looking for some family flexibility, and I actually started um, 32 weeks pregnant at this. <laughs> I started then um, and have been executive director now for a year. That is awesome. That is awesome. Yes, I we that was at that time where the Hearts office was right across from Hope. Mm-hmm. I remember you starting there. Um, yeah. That's fantastic. For those of you who don't know a little the heart trivia, Kelsey wrote our benediction song that we sing every Sunday. So uh, thank you for that time honored gift. It has been it's gone platinum at the heart for sure. <laughs> As you know, participants of the Table Talk gathered Wednesday, the 9th of of November, and we had this conversation related to um, what it really looks like to be pro-life. We had a conversation, how do Christians navigate a post-Roe v. Wade world? Last night, we gathered at Valley Cruces Conference Center to have a clarifying and compassionate conversation with issues related to abortion. Our Table Talk initiative has been one where we have built one another up around challenging issues and shed more light than heat. And a lot of interesting dialogue there. And after the meeting was over, there were still some lingering uh, things that we wanted to kind of extend the conversation, provide some additional resources. And we thought uh, none other than than you would be a wonderful voice to speak into this. So um, I'm going to just directly quote one of the participants' questions. We had like a whiteboard that they wrote on some some ideas. So let me just quote them. And uh, if you want to field this question for us, give us some ideas about how we might chew on these things that are still kind of tumbling around in our hearts and heads as we uh, want to respond well to God in the situation um, that we're speaking about. So let me read this first question for you. What are some strategies that we can utilize as followers of Christ to address systemic issues that make the actual circumstances of raising a child less difficult? What do you think, Kelsey? (laughs) Yeah. Um, So I'm going to kind of back that question up a little bit, um, talking about the circumstances of raising a child and it being difficult Mm -hmm. Uh, even if you had every resource available to you raising a child is difficult and that's (laughs) Um, having you know two stable jobs a warm home food on the table every night it is still you know after the fall of man like we live in sin and we have all of these ideas of what things should be, what our kids should do. Um, and so even in, you know, being influenced by Christ and being able to raise them, it is still a challenge. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I want to look at it more of an opportunity of like, Mm -hmm. What can we do for these kids um, to be able to, how can we pour into their lives um, and be able to kind of work as a community to do that? And so kind of talking about those actual circumstances, kind of those, those lacks potentially, or maybe those barriers, um, hope, you know, kind of in those first days of life and in preparation for their life provides things like childbirth education classes, um, sometimes just a a checkup every week or two saying, Hey, how are you doing? You know, being able to open up those ministry um, opportunities for someone to say, Hey, I'm really needing this or, Hey, this circumstance changed. Um, And hope has the opportunity to be able to respond to those. And so I wouldn't say, you know, overall, it makes this idea of child rearing so much easier, but it's kind of this tiny little steps that we can take, um, to be able to come alongside people like that. And I think just in general, like we need to give each other grace in that. Sure. Sure. Uh, sure. Yeah. Raising children is a beautiful opportunity to sure. be able to generations. And I want us to be able to extend grace to each other. And especially in kind of the arena of unintended plant unintended or, um, just unsupported pregnancy, um, be able to come inside of them. And it's not going to be these huge strides, um, all at once, but just those little things to kind of encourage them and keep them, you know, 
encouraged on, you know, the journey that we all have. That's very unique. Yeah. 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 I, I think of many different things that, you know, the church is positioned to do in terms of like being a village for, for people. And, and sometimes that is interpersonal. Sometimes that's, you know, opening up your home and some of these situations obviously would need, you know, extended, you know, uh, Taylor had mentioned during this time, a, um, you know, an anonymous story of, of people that felt like the, the extra expense of a child might actually actually um, cause them to become homeless just because of the, the cost of living and, 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 and such. So I, I, I know there are, there are some organizations, and I guess this is a segue to our, our second question, um, because obviously hope does a lot, and, 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 and you've spoken to that, and, and, and we had a conversation about that um, on, on, uh, on the table talk. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, do, do you guys network? So I, I'll, mm-hmm. that's my question. I'll, I'll, I'll just point to this second question here and read it directly. But it's, yeah. um, the participants ask, how does hope work with other organizations in the community to serve vulnerable families? Because mm-hmm. obviously being pregnant and, and mm-hmm. the birthing part is a part that you guys look at especially at, but even beyond that, um, as the, the child rearing process, obviously, once that child is here they they might be in your home for 18 or more years you know so uh yeah are there or other organizations that help moms and in, in the stage of life you guys do or beyond and um yeah if you want to highlight anything there sure yeah so it's a great question because our mission i'll i'll read it for you is inspiring confidence building community mm-hmm promoting the well-being of women through medical, emotional, and practical services. Oh, and wow. yeah. we are able to provide a good amount of practical services here, mm-hmm. but we, kind of, we also realize our limitations that we yeah. cannot be everything to everybody right. um, in pregnancy and birth and kind of beyond. And so we um, are in constant communication with community partners that are able to kind of round out this pregnancy experience and childbirth experience of, you know, who's providing prenatal care, who's providing extra support programs for people that might have some extra barriers, Mm -hmm. you know, what kind of benevolence programs are out there for Mm -hmm. people that need an extra leg up or um, a way to still get ahead. Um, and bills might be coming due or an unexpected expense happens. Um, So, in every appointment, we provide a list of referrals of, you know, even though you might only need these five or six right now, here's an entire list. If your circumstances change, if something were to happen and you need um, a food resource or a housing resource, yeah. they're right here for you. Um, and then they can always contact us if they aren't able to get connected or if they have further questions. Um, we do see ourselves as a kind of that conduit of being yeah. able to share everything that we have in the community. And there is a lot in Watauga County. Like yeah. we are extremely blessed here yeah. um, to have a community that comes around families so powerfully. Like I even take advantage of some of those resources as Absolutely. well yeah, yeah. from council and harvest heart. And yeah. so, um, hope I feel like it's kind of like that launch pad into here's everything that you may or may not be aware of, but we want to make sure that you have all of that so that you have that power to be able to do what you need to do to have a happy and healthy pregnancy. That's fantastic. Yes. Mm-hmm. I, uh, in, a mentor of mine, you know, we would, before I worked at the heart, I worked at another church that had a lot of phone calls, just, you know, it was in the phone book and people called and, and we didn't, we weren't able to offer everything. You know, we, we did have a benevolence account. We did have some ways to help people, some ministries that were robust, but um, by and large uh, what, what would happen is uh, I needed to navigate the resources in the community and we called it the ministry of referral. And so it sounds like hopes also in the ministry of referral, uh, knowing what community resources to point people toward. Uh, yeah. Do you have a, a list that we could uh, post to our participants on uh, with 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 these kind of referrals, just to kind of show the the robust network of social organizations here in in the high country that we as a church family could even point people toward as well? Is that something you you have on on hand? Yeah, we can definitely provide that. And again, that's something that we also provide to each of our clients too. Awesome. And awesome. Uh, and I also I'll give a, a little 
um, plug for Hope. So Hope Services, like we do exist to serve women with unintended yeah. and who are at risk for abortion, but we serve every high country woman here. So yeah. a planned or an unplanned pregnancy, if you um, are just wanting a confirmation of pregnancy, um, a first check on baby to make sure that they're okay. And you want to be oriented to these resources. You are always welcome to make an appointment here awesome. um, that we do truly see ourselves as a, a community organization that serves the high country well. And we want to be known as that. And so when we, and one of our biggest referrals is word of mouth. So when we yeah. have, yeah have great experiences and we, we are blessed to have a very high percentage, almost hundred percent that they received excellent care and would recommend us those family or friend or friend, um, that, yeah, we want to be able to be able to share our resources and be able to provide kind of that reassurance and that power to you, to be able to, um, kind of move forward and confidently in that pregnancy. Right, Right. Right. Even when I was like, found out that I was pregnant with my first, um, before I had taken advantage of any of Hope's resource, like that's a huge step of like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm pregnant. Mm-hmm. But like, well, what do I do? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you might be the most prepared. You're still not totally prepared kind of for that right. trans life. So yes, we are, we are here for you. That's awesome. And- so, so I'm, I'm hearing you say, you know, it's scary, of course, for un, unintended pregnancy and, but it's scary in general to like you mm-hmm. bring in this person and, and you have this whole network. I think the narrative that maybe it, 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 there's a reason it's a narrative, right? That, that there's going to be a lack of time and money, or uh, you're not going to have enough. But what I'm hearing you say is that there's another narrative too, that's unfolding here in the high country that, that is one of, of, we can do this together. And there are people that are willing and able and excited to help others navigate that and connect people to the, the, the village that they need um, through different organizations and different uh, different people and individuals, but but that so I, I'm I'm hearing an invitation. Uh, just you know, if anybody's watching that that needs to know this, or or perhaps uh, knows someone that needs to know this, that the uh, th- there's a, a narrative of togetherness here that's that's true. And and like you said, you're you're you said all the the pretty much 100 percent of your clients have suggested that that what they're receiving here is something that is incredibly empowering so that's that's really really good to hear <laughs> it's yeah. awesome um so uh you know I, I i love how this is a conversation that's been contextualized into the high country and i think that's mm-hmm. something it's it's so easy to see this only as a national conversation rather than as one that's playing out in the local space so i i i'm grateful that we have local representatives of people that are really hands-on with the women here and in and, and the community uh, for this uh, particular uh, need. And I wonder though, you know, not only here in Boone, but also in, in our social media and in our conversations online and, and outside of uh, the context of, of Watauga County, uh, I have a, a really good closing question. Maybe it's a, it feels challenging, uh, but I'll throw it at you. That one of participant asked, how do we re- redeem the pro-life conversation in the public sphere? Yeah, it is a big question. And I think one that is just, it's not going to be answered overnight. Uh, It's going to, it's going to take work and progress and a slow kind of that mutual understanding of, you know, we are these kind of two sides, both have the understanding of like, they want to protect and uphold women Mm -hmm. and, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, there are just two very different ways of looking at it and responding to it. Mm-hmm. And so um, there was an article that I read that I keep coming back to, like literally I read it at least once a month because it's <laughs> That's awesome. um, called Toward a More Comprehensive Pro-Life Vision um, by Scott Sauls. And I'll send you the link yeah. to it. because yeah, we'll, think- we'll post the link in the yeah. YouTube description. So that'll, yeah, yeah. Um, it is a powerful article. I think just a very, um, humble and beautiful take on kind of what it means to be pro-life and not in the political sense of all of this kind of noise, um, but kind of very personal and kind of what, what God intended it to be. Mm -hmm. And so 
in conclusion in this article, um, I'm going to read it word for word just because. Yeah, yeah go for it. Um, <laughs> So wouldn't it be great if communities existed where any mother, married or unmarried, would feel welcomed and loved and know that her needs and the needs of her child would be attended to? If the church does what the church is called to do, there would be no poor or disregarded or demeaned in our midst. In short, I would rather build community and dialogue and live in a society where abortion, due to the love ready to be given to any child and any mother, is not merely illegal, but unthinkable. Mm -hmm. And so I see that of just, it moves beyond kind of this like, just debate and tension so beautifully because it it kind of transcends it and Mm -hmm. says, what if we lived in a world where there was so much love and acceptance to where every child who isn't an image bearer of God is valued and accepted and loved by our society. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just in the world that we live in today, it kind of seems like it's like, Oh, can we get there? Mm -hmm. But I think having that mindset and coming at this conversation of, what can, what can things look like really long-term as we consider this through the lens of Christ and the gospel and his redemption, Yeah, yeah. That, you know, changing laws and policies can only do much. And it really doesn't do a whole lot to change hearts, but what can we do to be that people and that people? group of Christians. And in the article, it also talks about of early Christianity and how they came alongside, um, the unborn and the newly born, um, Mm -hmm. when they were discarded parts of society. Um, and so I just think it's just so beautifully worded of, I want to think that far ahead of Mm -hmm. living in a society of that kind of level of love. Yeah. And I think it's just a great challenge for us um, to be able to think in that way and do what we can to have a society like that. Absolutely. Uh, amen <laughs> to that. Yeah, I uh, it was synonymous with early church ministry that there was, you know, widows and orphans to feed, you know, the church has, has from its beginnings been active and not just advocating for, from a legal perspective, you know, I don't know if they were signing petitions to, to, you know, the, the, the Roman elite uh, to do these things, but they just were doing the work. And I think maybe in a, a American society, it's so easy to imagine that our, the lever, the, the main lever that we have has to be political or legal or, um, using our, you know, American um, vo- uh, voting privileges and all those things, which we shouldn't take for granted. And th- th- that's its own conversation. And at the same time, um, not waiting for that to, 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 to address the, the real needs of the most vulnerable among us. And, um, and, and, and these, these women and, and their, and their um, uh, newborns are definitely a part of this uh, mm-hmm. m- vulnerable population here. And, uh, so yeah, I, I, what would, what would it take, you know, um, to, to make that look unthinkable here in the high country? And I'm guessing, I'm guessing to speak optimistically. And I, I hope I'm, I'm, you know, correct me if I'm wrong here, but, but it, it sounds like, you know, it, there's a grain of that. There's a, uh, a part of that that's actually unfolding. That's, that's really real, that there are, there is a robust, uh, social network of organizations and individuals here in the high country that can, can really work against this idea that, that, um, um, abortion, um, is a, is a necessary option. Yeah. W- would you say in some small way to someone, uh, that, that the unthinkability meter, if there's a meter here in Boone, <laughs> is it a little less unthinkable here because of, uh, what, what you see going on behind the scenes at hope and other organizations? Um, yeah, are we you really can... helping. Are we really contributing? I guess is what I'm getting at, you know? Yeah. That, you know, I mean, I talk about some of our, community agencies that we have to like friends who live in other parts of the state or even the country. And they're like, you have that, or, um, they might have all those programs available, but there's a lot of stipulations and limitations programs. And in Watauga County there, like with the children's council, most of the programs are available to anybody, regardless of um, our socioeconomic status. And so it's beautiful that, our, our county is truly watching out for 
everybody and yeah. understand that need of, yeah, what can we do to make raising a family, however that looks, um, you know, whether planned or unplanned, single parent, married, that they, they still want children to succeed and thrive. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. That. That's awesome. Yeah, we, we did close the evening a little bit with some some sobering looks at some of the deeper needs that are that are really big, big picture stuff here in Watauga County in particular, and housing was up on the top of the list, like mm-hmm. not overnight fixes for, for any of these things, but the, the, the reality of, of so many of these basic um, human needs that there's a network of people um, here for those, for those mothers, here for those families, here for those children that, um, that that's got to give us a little seed of, of, um, excuse me for the 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 timely pun or not pun but double entendre of hope <laughs> you know like I guess there's a reason you guys call yourself hope <laughs> yeah and I will say one thing with that housing and specifically or specifically that yeah if anybody ever has um, a mother-in-law apartment or an empty home or yeah. um, an area of a home that we so we, I feel like we kind of see trends, of, you know, sure, sure. Where sometimes it feels like every client has a lot of needs or we get to a place where there's like clients that they know what they need to do. And, but it, it's just all over the place, sure, uh, sure. but we have generally clients that will come through that might be on the cusp of either losing their home, being insecure about a home Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. not such a good place and have a good place to go to, but not yet. Uh, And so if there are any um, individuals within the heart community that have kind of that flexibility to be able to host a a new mom or an expectant mom that she would have her own private space, um, you know, kind of like couple weeks to couple months, like we're always looking for connections in our community for that. Or if you know of anybody that might have that kind of connection, um, that's something that we're always looking out for Yeah, just so that, you know, we do want women to flourish and be able to have um, the best. And so making sure that we are aware of all of the resources that we have, um, and so if anybody feels led, um, that is always um, something that we're looking yeah. for that you know, not a lot of people can provide, but if that is something right. that is available, um, we'd love to talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I am encouraged by this conversation as much as we, um, we, we don't want this to just be a conversation. That's something that the table talks have kind of stirred up a little bit as like, we talk about these issues and then we, we want to get involved. And so um, if uh, I please plug hope, how, how do we support hope? Uh, um, I, I, the hearts, you know, we, we, we make a financial commitment as a church family in our church budget to hope. And we do that fundraising um, uh, annual thing. But if, if individuals are, are stirred to give above and beyond with their time or their finances, uh, how, how can they get involved? Sure. So one of our upcoming events is Hope for the Holidays. We are hosting Sandra McCracken at Alliance Bible Fellowship. Okay. okay. 16th. And so I can send you um, the ticket information. It's only $15 um, a ticket. Wow. Okay. Okay. And um, that ticket master. <laughs> Have you, you, you've heard about the, the Taylor Swift ticket <laughs> fiasco. Never mind. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So because of our gracious underwriters, a hundred percent of the ticket cost goes directly to hope. And oh, wow. 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 And wow. Okay. Kraken, and she's like my hero basically. Yes. So I'm yeah. so to be able to see her. Um, it'll be my third time um, seeing her in concert. Oh, and that's awesome. <laughs> um, you all can save the date for dodgeball for hope. Right. Um, right. And it gets pretty competitive from what I understand. Is that, is that the case? friendly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then one of our regular volunteer opportunities that we have are volunteer mentors. And so that is matching a mom within our community with Mm -hmm. one of our clients and they, um, 
walk together and they explore different topics about pregnancy, nutrition, exercise, prepared childbirth, infant care, postpartum care, kind of that spectrum of everything that they might need to walk through from early pregnancy up until um, toddler care. And they can earn up to $750 worth of incentives um, for them baby. And so the big requirement of that is just um, being a mom and having a heart to serve our clients. And so if you're ever interested, um, you can just reach out on our website um, and we can get you connected with our next upcoming training. And then hope is hundred percent donor funded. And so I wouldn't be doing my job if I said we are always in need of financial support. Um, Like, like, you know, costs are going up. Um, We are feeling the pinch of like, oh, that went up $5 or that went up $5. Yeah, we are 100% privately funded. Um, We receive no state or federal funding um, to do the work that we do. And so we rely on individuals, businesses, and churches in our community to support us. And so um, if folks do feel a calling to give, um, whether that is one-time support or monthly support, they can do so on our website. And also, if you ever want to come visit Hope, um, I would love to be able to host you. Um, we have a couple days each week where we're not seeing clients. And so I have the flexibility to be able to give tours. And so if you want like a firsthand look at our ministry space, I'd love to host you and, um, be able to just kind of give you a window into hope, I guess. Yeah. All of that, um, of just what we do and how we serve here. Yeah. Yeah. So the, so the doors are open. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, well, I, I am so grateful for your role in this community and what uh, y- the organization Hope does and, and all the organizations that work alongside it. And I'm I'm grateful for uh, our church family's support of Hope. And and uh, yeah, we just pray this is like, a, I don't know, that, that God will use us to do the meaningful things that would, would provide uh, these, these vulnerable and often marginalized people, um, yeah. these families, these moms, um, they're, they're yet to be born children, um, to, to really give meaningful, tangible hope, um, um, born and made in, uh, and fashioned after the image of God is every human being. And we, we, what that really looks like to, to be committed to that. We want to be, um, pressing in, in, into those <laughs> spaces with, with, uh, with hope. So I, I, I'm grateful, uh, Kelsey, for your wisdom and, and helping us think through how to, how to move in the right directions in our own town. And, and, uh, we just, we hope the conversation continues. So thank you so much. Thank you. We certainly appreciate you all. And just how, you know, kind of in the seasons of the heart, you have come alongside clients and having, you know, um, people in the congregation that, you know, have experienced that and just continuing to love and encourage them. Like I saw that, um, regularly and it is just an encouragement to know that we have a beautiful community of churches that love and want to love on, um, women facing unexpected pregnancy. And so we thank you all for that and your contributions to that. It, it is making a difference here in the high country. Glory to God. Glory to God. 